Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. In this video, we are going to talk about what makes a good, bad, and outstanding PhD thesis. Here you see, on the left, very left, we have the dimensions of the thesis, where we have the introduction, literature review, methodology and methods, results and analysis, and discussion and conclusions. So these five dimensions are common for any journal article, any thesis, all the time. We can break them into more categories, like for example, we can have discussion and conclusion in two different parts. Then we can have literature review, where we have one part for like literature review and one part for hypothesis development. But it's still, there we can actually broadly group them into these five categories. So considering these five categories, we are going to look into the characteristics of an unacceptable, acceptable, very good and outstanding thesis. For your information, these points are not really my own. These are taken from a book called Making the Implicit Explicit. Maybe in 20 years or so, I will also make my own points for these categories of theses under these dimensions. But for now, these are mainly based on a book. Okay, so now let's have a look on the unacceptable thesis. So for an unacceptable thesis, the introduction is likely to be that the problem is not really stated. And also the introduction may include a lot of irrelevant material. Okay, from the literature review perspective, we will see that it has a partial coverage. It does not discuss the criteria for inclusion and exclusion. It accepts literature at face value, so it does not really reflect on what has been found in the uh, published studies. And also the history of the field may not be discussed. And only description, no synthesis or little synthesis. So from the methodology and uh, methods perspective, we will see that the methods and philosophical perspectives are not discussed. Often uses a wrong or inappropriate method and the methods do not relate to research question or theory. And the method we will see is maybe flawed. And from the results and analysis perspective, we will see that in an, in an unacceptable uh, dissertation, the analysis is wrong, inappropriate, or incompetent, and cannot discern what is important or explain the results, and makes improper inferences. So maybe the result says something, and the interpretation is something else. And then we will also see from the discussion and conclusion that it's inadequate or misleading. It may be likely to repeat the introduction and does not understand the results of what has been done. So these are the characteristics of an unacceptable PhD thesis. So now let's have a look into the acceptable one. So here we will see that in the introduction, the idea seems to be there, maybe not very well written, narrower in scope. From the literature review perspective, we will see some discussion of criteria for inclusion and exclusion is there, missing some important works. It has included uh, many of the important works, but it still misses some of them. And we'll notice some understanding of the history of the literature in the field. Also, it points out to some gaps in the literature. From the method and uh, methodology perspective, we will see that it briefly discusses research methods, uses the appropriate method for the research problem, but it lacks epistemological understanding of the methodological application. And then also it provides sufficient documentation for our application. Not too detailed, not enough, but sufficient. Okay. And in the results, we'll see that the analysis is objective, which is good. It would align with the research questions and theory, but we'll see that it provides small, um, small amounts of data and interpretation and maybe too simplistic. In the discussion and conclusion, we'll see that it, it provides a summary of what has been accomplished, but does not address the significance of the research or does not place it in the context of the study. And often it will identify few non-specific next steps. Now let's have a look into the very good thesis. So in the, in the introduction of a very good thesis, we will see that it motivates the work, it clearly describes what is the problem and why it is important, and it indicates what the contributions are. 
And in the literature review, we'll see that it provides specific criteria for inclusion and exclusion of literature. It provides some critical examination of the state of the art of the field. It also provides some understanding of the history of the literature in the field. And most imp importantly, it reviews the relationship among the key variables in the topic of interest. And most likely it tries to take it a little bit further by trying to do some conceptualization. In the method part, we will see that it critiques research methods. It discusses practical and scholarly significance of the methods used. It demonstrates epistemological understanding of the method. And it uses existing methods very correctly and creatively. So this is actually one interesting point that, you know, we don't develop methods every day, but we can use existing methods in innovative ways time to time. So that's one of the characteristics of a good thesis in the methodological perspective. And then in the results, we will see that the results are objective and original, and it provides clear reporting of the results and evidence. And it also provides good interpretations of the results. And in the discussion and conclusion, we will see that it provides a good summary. It ties everything together. It discusses the limitation and identifies some good future research directions. So now finally, let's have a look into the outstanding thesis. So here in the introduction, we will see that it presents a compelling, clear and precise research question. It places the research problem in the context of the study. It indicates why it is significant and why it is important. And in the literature review, we'll see that it provides very clear inclusion and exclusion criteria, but also it justifies the choice of those criteria. Okay. And it distinguishes between what has been done in the field from what has to be done and identifies ambiguities and also synthesizes and offers new perspective of the field. And in the methodology part, we will see that it identifies the main methodologies and research method that has been used in the field. And it demonstrates clear understanding of the philosophical perspective of the methods that has been applied. And it uses the state of the art tools and techniques and approaches. And often these outstanding thesis will use multiple methods. In the analysis, we will see that they are very original, powerful, sophisticated, and robust. So normally for robust analysis, often we use multiple data sources or multiple methods. So which kind of confirms the robustness of the findings. And it provides plausible interpretation of the findings and discusses the limitations. And in the discussion and conclusion, we will see that it is short, clear, and concise to the point refers back to the introduction and the research questions and how they are addressed, identifies the significance and the contribution of the study, and places the work in a wider context. And finally, it will give some very specific guidelines for future research. So here we have presented the characteristics of unacceptable, acceptable, very good, and outstanding thesis. I hope you find this useful and I would like you to reflect on your thesis. Where are you? What do you need to do to move from, let's say, unacceptable to acceptable or acceptable to very good or very good to outstanding? So to reflect on that and feel free to leave a comment on uh, your reflection and how you find this useful for your thesis. Besides for your information, we are developing some courses for the PhD process, which will guide you to finish your PhD on time and finish your PhD successfully. So have a look on our website. The courses are in development, but very soon they will be available. And as soon as they are available, you will find the link of the courses below in the video description. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, feel free to share with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to Research Hub.